Sports Radio 93.7, the fan, fan weather. A little rain early today. Clouds giving way to sun, breezy and colder, high 40. It's cold. Tonight, breezy this evening, otherwise mainly clear and colder, low 23. Fan weather is brought to you by Sun Chevrolet and McMurray. Save some green in March at Sun Chevy or sunchevy.com. Out to the fan hotline, Pip head men's basketball coach Jeff Capel joins the program. Coach Capel, good morning. Hey, good morning, PB. How you doing, man? I am doing great. Uh, I know you're in the off season. I know it's a, you know, it's always a letdown when the season ends. Only one team gets to, to end on a high note uh, at the end of a at the end of a, a, a long basketball season. You're getting some much deserved R and R, but not much of it. Uh, as you look back <laughs> on this season, man, just reflect on on the season that was and how far your team came. Because I felt like, and you said it, played some of the best basketball in the country in February and March. Yeah, well, first and foremost, man, I want to give a shout out to uh, Duquesne men's basketball program. It's been really awesome to watch them, um, you know, for them to win the Atlantic 10 tournament and to qualify for the NCAA tournament, especially in Keith Dan Brock's uh, last season. He announced his retirement and then for them to go out and play as well as they did and win in the first round and uh, got a big game today against Illinois. You know, I've Keith and I have been in touch all year long, and it's been amazing to watch what they've done. Um, so I wanted to say that first. For our team, man, I thought we really got better as the season went on. I'm really, really proud of my group. Um, you know, we had four new guys uh, that this was their first time in high major college basketball. Two true freshmen, and then two guys in Zach. Austin and Ishmael Leggett, where this was their first time at this level. And we took some lumps. Uh, we struggled a little bit, but they just had incredible attitudes. We continued to fight, and we got better. And I felt like that we were playing our best basketball at the end of the season. If you look at right before we played North Carolina in the ACC tournament, uh, going into that game, from January 20th until that moment, so almost the last two months, both us and Carolina were 12-3, and three, the two best records in the ACC. And we had some unbelievable road wins. We had started to finally put it together, and I thought we battled in that game against North Carolina and, and had a chance. Um, as disappointing as it was, and it's incredibly disappointing, I haven't watched any games. This is the first time in my life I haven't watched just because of how difficult it is. Yep. I'm just really proud of how we got better, how we continued to fight, um, and turned a negative into a positive by the end of the year. You know, Coach, you mentioned the, the fight against North Carolina. Obviously, you know, Blake didn't have his best day. Ishmael Leggett didn't have his best day. Two freshmen uh, were a big reason why you guys remained in that game at arm's length and had a chance to – uh, to win it at the end, and this this kind of narrative now that's out there, and it's real. Uh, we we saw it with Kentucky losing to Oakland, talking about how you can't win with freshmen. I'm not sure. I've watched some of these games, admittedly. Uh, it's been hard, but I've watched them. I'm not sure there's two better freshman guards in the country. They did not look like freshmen at all at the end of the season. What do you make of their growth over the, the, the course of the season, the level they played at, uh, particularly at the end? Yeah, well, I thought by the end, I did think, you know, we had, with those two guys and with Ish, I thought we had one of the best backcourts in college basketball. Um, and I thought it really grew and took off with the growth of Jalen. All three of them were really, really good. But where our team took off is when Jalen finally got healthy and he started to play up to the capabilities that we felt like he could. You know, Ish and Bob got off to really, really strong starts. Um, but Jalen's emergence took some of the pressure off of each of those guys. Bob playing the lead guard position early and having the ball a lot, that was the first time in his life that he had done that. So I was really worried about him wearing down. Um, Ish, you know, providing a spark offensively, defensively, rebounding for us right from the beginning. But when Jalen started to emerge in mid-January is when we took off. And I thought those three guys, uh, but especially the two freshmen, uh, were a huge part of why our team got better and why I thought we were one of the better teams uh, as we got towards the end of the season. Talking to Jeff Capel on the Panthers Insider Show, 
you look at next year, and I know there's a lot that goes on in off seasons. The portal's open, but but let's just let's play the what if game. Um, this team stays together. This core, particularly the guards. W- what is this team's ceiling with Bub, Jalen, and Ish back next year? Yeah, I think if we were able to get all three of those guys back, um, I think we have a chance to be really, really good. Uh, obviously, now and it's you know, it's public knowledge we've lost two guys in the portal with Federico and with Will, and we wish them luck. I mean, I spoke to both of them. I'm trying to do. We are trying to do everything we can to support them. They're great. Pitt. Uh, Will is a Pitt man. He's a graduate of the University of Pittsburgh, and. And just a really good guy. Same with Federico, although he's not a graduate. Um, But with those three guards back, the twins back, you know, a healthy Papa Conte, Zach Austin, um, you know, we really feel like we have a chance to, you know, be very, very good next year. Obviously, there are some pieces that we need to add. and We're working very, very hard with that. Uh, You know, we'll have Marlon Barnes back from a red shirt. We'll have the two freshmen that we've signed coming in. You know, we need some help up front. That's something we're looking to address. But, you know, we're excited about the prospects of what we can be next year, especially if we're able to retain those three guards. Last one for you, Coach. I know you are uh, you got some family time, which you uh, totally, totally deserve and have earned. Uh, I spent a lot of time away from them during the course of the season and in the off season. What is the off season like now? I mean, the, the portal opened literally the first day of the NCAA tournament, which – it doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense to me, but that's just my my opinion. Uh, what does it look like? I, I know retention's a big part of it, um, but but how do you operate uh, in adding pieces, and, and how different is that than what you, you grew accustomed to growing up in this profession? Yeah, well, there's a lot in that question. <laughs> you know, Sorry, it, loaded it actually, question. No, 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 no. The, the offseason, you know, first and foremost, is really not an offseason. You just don't play games. <laughs> I think it's busier now and more hectic now than it is during the season. During the season, you're in a pattern. You know, you know, you know, you're going to watch tape. You got to prepare for these games, writing the practice plan, all of those things, making sure your guys are okay. Now it's, you know, who do you get in touch with? What agent do you talk to? Because we've introduced agents back into this thing now. Yep. Um, uh, you know, you mentioned the date of the portal opening. I don't know if there's one coach that voted for that. You know, we have these votes, and they they ask our opinion, but they never take our opinion. You have people that are making rules that don't know anything or making decisions about college basketball that don't know anything about our sport. I mean, and that's one of the most frustrating things. Uh, but we are working diligently, um, you're trying to do everything we can to help improve this program. I think we've grown it, especially over the past two years. We've making big jumps. We've made big jumps, even though we didn't qualify or get selected for the NCAA tournament. This was a really good season, and it was a season of growth. Back to back, 20 win teams. Um, we had 22 wins, which was one more than we did last year. We finished in the top four in the ACC. So I'm really, really proud of the growth that we've shown, and I think we have a chance to take another big leap next season. Well, congratulations to you and your staff on on that success. I know it didn't end uh, the way you wanted it to, but certainly something to build off of. And best of luck uh, in the portal and otherwise, and uh, take care of that beautiful family of yours. Appreciate it, man. Thank there you. Goes. Jeff Capel, head men's basketball coach at the University of Pittsburgh. I, I don't think you can – Say much more about him, uh, such an asset to the university and certainly has done a, a just an admirable job bringing this program back and seeing that arena filled up the way it was filled up these last two years towards the end of the season. I think if you're a Pitt basketball fan, there are a lot of basketball fans driving around. Uh, you can anticipate uh, another fun season in 2024-25 with these guards back, uh, hopefully, and uh, th- that is obviously a, a more complex issue. Uh, NIL has a lot to do with it. Pitt is fortunate to have Alliance 412 uh, as its collective to uh, to support those efforts in addition to other uh, NIL opportunities uh, for all of our student athletes at Pitt. But let's say those guys are back. I, I think I-, I haven't watched a team that has better guards than what Pitt would have next year, and that's from my eyes, and I'm sure Jeff Capel and his staff feel 
the exact same way. Before we break, I got to give a shout out. Uh, my my in laws are in Florida. Lucky them. Uh, it's forty degrees here. They're in they're down in Bradenton or Anna Marie Island, something like that. Both birthdays this week. Uh, my mother in law Trina Reese and then Bob Reese is the big big seven zero this week, and he was a hooper himself at Mount St Mary's. Pretty good player. Uh, turned seventy, you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it. And uh, so from the the Bostics up in Pittsburgh, we wish you guys both a happy birthday. Enjoy the sunshine while we enjoy the rain, cold, and wind. Back next week, uh, we will be talking more football, have some scrimmage to talk about. We'll see what guests we come up with. Matty Harkins behind the glass. Great job, as always, keeping things going, keeping me on schedule. Have a great Saturday. Enjoy basketball. Best of luck to Duquesne tonight and Coach Dan Brott. Keep that career going, although I know retirement's around the corner for you. Best of luck to the Dukes, and we'll talk to you next week. Hail to Pitt.